Hello everyone, I'm Joanne. Welcome to my craft room. I'm excited to make this card with you today. I used my new arch dies, the nested ones that I just uh, purchased from scrapbook.com. I am an affiliate. There are links below for you to click on to order any and all of your craft supplies. Of course, there are links below to what I have uh, used today, but you can always type your item into a search bar and order anything you'd like just by clicking my links. I appreciate that. It supports my YouTube channel and me. I really appreciate it. So today, like I told you in a couple of other videos, I wanted, I could not wait to use these arches and there's many, many ways that you can use these. I did for the very first time some ink smushing here. I, so we're going to do that together. I made these beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, shimmery, hummingbirds using my I just have ordered two um, inks here of the Lisa Horton craft the cloud nine interference ink I just I've just ordered these two colors and I'm telling you out of two um, <laughs> colors you get like four different color it's it's amazing so always remember that this side is if you put the ink on white paper and then this side is if you put it on black it will turn this color so what I did here everything here is on white paper but right here on this black I don't know if it's picking it up it has like a yellowish goldish tint to it right in here the orange yellowish goldish tint because it's on black and it came out so pretty guys I'm so excited about it so we're gonna have fun doing a little embossing and die cutting and inking we, we do almost everything here so I've used the nested dies and again I'm using BB Cameron's I love this set the hummingbird sentiments I know many of you have it I'm using the BB Cameron's um, hummingbird collection when they send us things it comes all like in just um, baggies because uh, we are influencers for them uh, but you will get everything in the correct packaging so I'm just excited to do this today with you guys all right and so let's move this aside and let's go ahead and bring in the Platinum 6, which I showed yesterday in a video how I did some letterpress with it. I was really happy with that. Okay, so first, um, I'm going to go ahead, and this, is, this piece is uh, 5 and a quarter by 4. I have a black piece that is 5 and 3 eighths by 4 and a quarter. This is actually Gina K's Sea Glass. I love this color. And I'm going, I just want to use, um, this is a regular embossing folder. It's just the dots, like, it's like Swiss dots to me. Polka dots, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this makes a fantastic background. So I just kind of try to line it up and make sure that, you know, things look straight at least. You know, that my dots aren't cockeyed. So everything has a sandwich on here and all die cutting machines give you sandwiches, okay? So we'll just use um, how to emboss the A and B plate. Um, I'm sorry, how to emboss, yes, how to build an embossing sandwich right here. The A and B plate, your standard embossing um, folder and then the cutting plate right there. Okay, so just here, here, and then my cutting plate, C. And because this is not a 3D embossing folder, we don't use the D plate, right? Wonderful. I'm left-handed, so I have to flip everything around. Isn't that pretty? That just makes a nice background. Okay, let's set that aside. And let's go ahead. I'm going to bring my magic mat in. Somebody told me, like, if I scrub this, it takes the scratches out of it. I just haven't done it yet. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to try it. Okay, so first, I need um, a little panel of white with my smaller arch here. And let's see, which arches am I using? I'm using... Oh, let's see. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I'm using seven and nine. Ten, wow, there's 12 of these guys. Seven and nine is what I'm using. If you count from the inside out. So let's cut this one out. 
do you know, since I bought the Magic Mat, I have not replaced this top plate. It's been over a year. I believe. At least nine months, I'll say that. I can't believe that I've been an affiliate for a year. That's wonderful, right? Okay, here's a piece of black. And I want to say thank you to everyone for supporting me. I have a lot of things are coming in January here to from Spellbinders. So you'll look forward to that on this channel. Okay, now we've got both of our arches cut out. Isn't this pretty? These are fun. These are just absolutely fun. So we're going to go like this. But remember, see, black and white, we're going to get to how we're going to do this. We're going to get to this, I promise. That's amazing, right? Okay, so let's get a piece of scrap here. And let's start to cut out our hummingbirds. Let me get another piece. I think I need a few pieces. I'll just get some white pieces. Now there's um, dyes on here for flowers and leaves and they all match up with that big one that I showed you that's five by seven. Um, but today we're just going to make the hummingbirds. Let's see, let me put this one here and the birds. Ooh, that's a little tight, right? Let's put those guys right here. Just trying to use up some scrap. And we'll put the little faces and the heads here. And that takes care of that. And I'm going to cut the wings out twice. Look at me, twice, twice, okay? Here, twice. <laughs> See, do I have enough room? I think I might take these off of here. Who are you guys? Can you believe that it's December? I was looking at the forecast, and six weeks ago we had had, I think it was, I think I even said it, we had had thunder and rain and hail and fog or something like that, which usually here in the upper East Tennessee region means that within about six weeks we should have snow on the ground. So I'm scrolling through Facebook and it says that we could possibly have a snow event next week which is six weeks out from that you know that we might have like an inch of accumulation which here is a lot uh, all the kids are out of school they love it you know because of the mountains and the buses they can't run on those hilly mountains you know for snow we've already had snow way up high in the mountains but we haven't had it down here so uh yeah so i was like oh this is another wives tale that's gonna ring true right kind of crazy that the way that um you know like old appalachian people by you know that they knew the weather by stuff like that and i think it's so interesting um and I've always followed it, and I've always believed in it, because I figured they know, you know. They were here a lot longer than I've been here, so <laughs> those wives' tales, you know, that go around like that. But I think they're also fun. So we'll see. We'll see if in about a week or so, uh, we get a little bit of a snow event here. Okay, now, let's lay everything out. I could, I need my mat. I know I do. Yeah. Okay. I'll just unroll. This poor thing has been through it. The other day I got it in the sink and washed it really well with some uh, Dawn dish detergent and everything. You know, it comes right back to life. It does really good. I had ink and everything all over it. But that's what this is for, right? So I'm just going to lay my wings out here. And I want them to face each other. Okay, just like that. Let's see, this one doesn't, that one doesn't. These two will go uh, the same way because of the way they're cut. 
no problem. This little head right here, and then this one. With what what I'm gonna do with the um, hummingbird is alternate my color. Okay, and let's get the birds out of here. So like if I use a base on the bird, it's body in blue. I'll use the other one in that kind of pinkish, coralish color. The birds go either way, you know, each way, I should say. And so with that being said, watch, because the heads go a certain way also. Like, see, this one can't go here. The beak's going out the wrong way. This one goes with that one. Then this head goes with that, okay? Do you see? Everything's facing that direction. Now I've got to put everything this direction. How do I know this? Because <laughs> I colored everything. I was like, wait a minute, everything's not going the way I want it to. So, <laughs> But yeah, we're good. And now um, the tail feathers, each bird gets one feather on the tail. Just like that. All right, now, I think we're good. Um, let me put this away. And now let's get this ink out. And this interference ink, I've had a lot of fun with this, okay? So what I want to do is I want this bird to be the pinkish color. I want a blue beak. I want a little pink head and a blue tail. Let's try to get that accomplished, okay? So let's open up our ink. I'm using my Pink Fresh Studio. What are these? These are the half inch ones. Okay. And so this bird I'm going to do in the coral color. Just making sure. Copying my card over here that I, you know, sometimes when you create stuff and then you go to copy it um, or remember what you did, it's like, what did I do? Okay, so coral here. On the bird's body. I don't know what I have in here, but I have something. I don't know. Whatever that I did. But it's okay. Okay, then um, I want the little head. Orange. Or the coral color. And I want this and this one blue. Now remember, we're on the white. Look how pretty that blue is. Cardstock, so you'll get that color... from that, um, let's see, what is that, the left side. <clears throat> Look how pretty, and it all shimmers, okay? I don't know if it picks up the shimmer on camera, but it does, it all dries to a beautiful shimmer. I love shimmer. Okay, now, this bird gets a blue body, or the teal, I should say, this is teal. Right, let's get the, the names right. This is Teal Twist and Fruit Salad. Teal Twist and Fruit Salad. Okay, now, so this one's blue. I want that one to be the coral. That one's coral. I want this to be blue. No, I don't. I want it to be... No, I want both the heads to be coral and both the beaks to be blue. Sorry. And then I'll change the tail feather. Yes, because... Let's do this one, this. And then this one, this. And you know what? Whatever we do is right. It doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to duplicate the other card. But honestly, well, however you do it is right. It's going to look beautiful. Okay, now, we have a solid color down. And, well, let's go ahead and do the solid color on the wings. This way, we stay within what we're doing. This row, I'm going to do the fruit salad. I don't know if the camera is picking up how when it dries, we've got some beautiful shimmer 
on all of it. Look at how gorgeous that is right through there. How did she ever come up with doing this kind of ink? I have no idea. So, you know, they're so talented, people like that. I'm not like that. Just let me have the product and let me play. I'm good with that. But with anything else, forget about it. I leave the hard stuff to them. And I love to watch BB Cameron's videos. She actually, when I did this card, when I first did her card, she herself made a comment on my um, video, and I was so happy, and I was so hopeful that I was doing a good job with her, you know, release, because I was really new to this, and um, yeah, so I was still kind of learning and this and that. I'm still learning. We're always learning. Okay, now what we want to do, this that's blue now, we want to put a little bit of our fruit salad. This is teal twist. We want to put a little bit of fruit salad here at the bottom. And we're going to change that color to purple. And it's going to give us shimmer. Now what we're going to do is take the teal twist onto the fruit salad. And we're going to come here with that. And that's going to give us a totally different color on its own also. Now, again, the little body of the um, fruit salad will do a little bit of teal twist right here. And then here, we're going to do a little bit of fruit salad. And let's see. Oh my goodness, guys. This is so pretty. When you add that and let it make its own color in there, look at that shimmer. Look at these wings. That's amazing. I love that. Okay, let's put these guys together and see what we have. <clears throat> so... I haven't opened my artsy glue yet. I'm just going to continue using what I have in the bottle. Okay. Put a little bit of glue right here. And I'm going to put the little head on here. And I did this this way because I wanted the beak. I remember now. I wanted the beak to be blue. And then I wanted its little eye to be blue. Or teal. I keep saying blue. So right here. And see how nice it is that we lined everything up? So we just kind of go through and put it together. Okay, we'll get the tail on here. Put a little glue. Sorry, I had to take a little break there. I got a phone call from a friend. Put that one right there. And you know, something about this is like every time you do it, it's going to be different, which is fun. Now, this little guy right here, I want two of these, like these two right here. Look at how nice that's going to look. I got to put that one in front or maybe that one. Hmm, I kind of like it like that, okay? And it doesn't matter however you do it. Just have fun putting your hummingbirds together. These wings go many, many ways. Uh, this next one, we're going to put one on the top and one on the bottom. I'm going to put those to the side, just like that. Perfect, right? Okay, now, let's get this little guy together. little beak and you could always cut this out of black if you wanted to 
you know, like I said, with this, nothing's right, nothing's wrong, okay? It's just, it's right no matter how you do it. It doesn't mean that one way is the right way. That's what's wonderful, too, about this collection. You know, you could use, um, you could put these together with designer series paper if you wanted to. You can just cut color cardstock. They came out so pretty. Their colors are just beautiful. And like I said, just two ink pads. Very, very, very simple for me. Okay, now this guy is going to get a wing on the top. Like right here. Okay, because I want him like flying. And then we need the wing going the other way. Now this one, it has a blue and a purple. I'm going to just put two different ones right there. Because hummingbirds have many different colors. Isn't that pretty? Ah, oh, they look so great, right? I could have used this one and then, let's see, I could use that one and then put this one over here. Let me see. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I'm just going to attach that one down there. This one right here. That's wonderful. <clears throat> now this one here, and I'm just going to quickly adhere this back here. That's a great thing about crafting, right? You can always change your mind. Do whatever you want to do. Have fun. There. Cute. Two nice birds. All right, let's move these aside. Now let's bring in <coughs> um, this little piece right here. I'll save these for another day. Um, so let's bring this in. And I want to add some of this so that I get like a gold, the fruit salad, okay? I want that kind of gold around my black arch. So I've got my little dome here and I'm going to pounce and I bet that's what that is. That's black paper in there. I know that now from the edges. And I'm just going to go around the edge. You don't have to do the whole thing. Because we're going to put that other piece on top. Uh, look at that shimmer. It's like a greenish gold. I love that. And it doesn't matter. Put however much you want on. A little bit. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And a little bit more down in here. Just need it on that edge a little bit more. Okay. Just like that. All right. Let's move that aside. Let's go around the edge. Wait a minute. Let's go this way, too. Just in case I missed anything. Yeah, that's what that is. It's just a little bit of the black paper from the die cut. That's easy to get out. Okay, right there. Good. Now... Let's close this one up, and <clears throat> let's also move this to the side. I'm going to pick this up, and I'll go ahead and wash that again in a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is take some of the teal twist, put it on my glass mat, just like that. I'm going to add some water, and I'm going to slushy this all over the place. Adding a little bit more water. Thin it out a little bit, okay? Now, again, each time you do this, it'll be different. This I'll run under the sink and clean it, okay, in just a little bit. And now, I've got my little piece here. Remember the white piece that we did? And I'm just going to blot it into this ink. And I'm just going to let it, and every again, every time you do this, it's something different. Oh, I like that. Right? Okay, move that to the side. All right, let's clean this up.
a little alcohol on there. There we go. <clears throat> that might have sprayed a little bit on here, which is really kind of cool too. However it comes out, it comes out. It's okay. It's supposed to have that definitely uh, distressed kind of look, but it's curly, right? So I'm going to take heat tool and I'm going to flatten it out and dry it at the same time. Watch that color. What are you what? Oh, I love it. I love that. I'm going to flip it over. Now, I have to admit, I got a little bit in a hurry with the other one, and I tried to glue this down. Even though I uh, heat dried it with the heat tool, I tried to glue it right down, and honestly, it needs to sit. Because this is not a, I just used the Nina White cardstock, because it is not a um, watercolor paper, it's still damp inside. I can feel it, okay? So when I go to attach it to here, it's going to want to curl up because it's still a little bit wet. So what I'm going to do, this and some blocks. Just a little weight on it. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so I think we're as dry as we're going to get right here and as flat as we're going to get. Looks pretty good. Now, let's go ahead and start to assemble the card some. The base is 8.5 by 5.5 scored at 4 and a quarter. This is Nina White cardstock. I have a piece of black that's 5 and 3 eighths by 4 and 1 eighth. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the piece of uh, sea glass, Gina K that is embossed with our beautiful dots. There's always a clog. It never fails. All right, let's get these together a little bit, just so that we clean up everything around here. There we go. A little extra glue because of the embossing. Now this gives us a really thin border because this is five and three eighths by four and one eighth. This gives us a nice thin, thin black border. Love liquid glue. That looks so pretty, right? Nice. Let's go ahead and attach that to our card base. And now we'll also have a white border. So it's white, black, and then the sea glass. Very nice. Okay, let's do a little stamping our sentiment. I'm going to bring in my mini Misty. I love this little device. It just fits perfectly, you know. So I'm going to take this little piece here that we made, and I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to put my wording, my sentiment, just saying bye to, just flying, just saying bye, just flying by to say hello, just saying bye to fly hello. That's, <laughs> and try to get it nice and straight. Let's see, I think it's, right there. And now what's great about the Misty is you have grid. That looks really good, okay. Let me get some black ink. And we'll close that door. Give it a push. And let's make that just a little more bold. The greatest thing about a positioning device. Just like that. Perfect. Peel that off. Put that over there to be cleaned. And here. Also, a mini Misty is a great Christmas gift if you have someone who you know loves to craft. 
that would be wonderful. Okay, so now we have this piece and this piece. Look how pretty it's coming together nicely, right? I'm going to add some liquid glue. I thought I was going to use some inline, but with the way that this is a little curled, I want that liquid glue right to the edge, very thin. Let's go ahead and lay this down. Oh, look how pretty. That's perfect. I'm going to use my Spellbinders white foam squares that I purchased the other day. Right here they are. These are the two millimeter large. I, I got the whole uh, package. So it had like these large, the smalls, and it had um, this in it, the inline, and then a refill. A really great value actually. So I'm just going to place these guys all around here. And the only difference that I see between these and the ones from scrapbook.com is that these little edges are rounded instead of pointed. I thought that was pretty cool. Put one here, one there, and I think I will do one right here just because it is a large piece. Okay, so that's good. Oh, these are wonderful. It's the first time I've used them. Let's get the card base in. And this just looks so pretty. Oh, I love it. Here we go, right here. So I'm looking down there at the lower part so that I keep my line. That looks good. I keep my line straight here with my dots, okay? Because that could really throw you off. Now we have our sentiment. Now let's put our friends here. Watch, this is just makes this card. One and two. Oh my goodness. Love these hummingbirds. If you don't already have this set, this would be a great um, Christmas gift too to someone, right? So I want to make sure I don't come off of my card. And I do want a little bit of the blue sky, kind of what I call it, uh, showing there. This also, the same way, you don't want it to come off of your card because it has to fit in the envelope. And because I popped this up, I put this down with liquid glue. Ah, love it. Okay, so I use the Hummingbird Sentiments. That's my favorite one. Just flying by to say hello. I really believe I've used that one a lot. And now I want to place what few I have left and I forgot to order them on. I cannot believe I forgot to put these on my last order. Um, but I did. My crystal mix. They were even in stock and I forgot. I'm almost done with those. Let's use the new pick tool. I like it. I'm going to put two here. And I'm going to put three here. Ooh, you moved. There. That's it. <laughs> And one. Two. And there we go. This is our card for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed making this beautiful paper with the interference ink from Lisa Horton. This, this just needs time to dry, that's all. You know me, I get in a hurry. Um, the Lisa Horton Interference Ink, using the beautiful arches that I just purchased, uh, those dies from scrapbook.com, and of course, BB Hummingbirds, BB Cameron's Hummingbirds, that are absolutely stunning. No matter what you do to these birds, they're stunning, okay? This ink was absolutely beautiful with it, but I've done it before with um, uh, cardstock. I've done, you know, other kind of shimmer. They're just fun. Hummingbirds are just fun, and they're just so cute. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.